Yesterday, I went online and got my free four COVID tests that will be mailed to me. I got the approval, everything, with all of that through the USPS. And then I'm thinking, how, can I trust these tests? Like what, <laughs> what's with the at-home test? Because I had mm-hmm. my only COVID test where they jabbed it up my nose and mm-hmm. basically touched the top of my eyeball. It was uncomfortable. <laughs> I was negative. I was happy. But that seemed to be legit. What mm-hmm. is with the home test and how do they work? Yeah. So the home test, they're actually still going to swab your nose. And I want to emphasize that because there are a lot of misinformation videos getting millions of views on TikTok and the like right now where people are saying they're swabbing their throats and they're getting positives or they're taking the home test and putting them on the water and they turn positive. But that's simply because of the false positive reaction that can happen. But in fact, these home tests that you will receive will include you needing to swab your own nostrils. So Yes, you're not going up to your eyeballs, but you're going to swab your nostril or your child's nostril, and then you're going to put it on the little thing, drip the little fluid, and you wait a few minutes to see if a line shows up. That's the positive line. It's almost like a home pregnancy test looks, but of course, this one isn't pregnancy test. It's a COVID test. And what it's looking for is proteins that are part of the make up the structure of the virus, not the spike protein. This is important to know. So there's no way that if you're vaccinated, you're going to have a false positive if you're not infected. This is actually detecting what we call the nucleocap capsid, which is like, if you think of your house and you're building a house, you actually need the frame of the house before you put on your siding and the roof and all that. The frame of a virus is the nucleocapsid. So it's very, very specific, but it's also very conserved no matter what the variant is. So there are people out there who are like, well, how do we know that it's going to detect Omicron or Delta or if a new variant comes about? The nuclear capsid is very stable. It doesn't really mutate or change. And so that's what it's looking for. And it's looking for the actual protein. So the test itself has antibodies against the nuclear capsid. When you swab your nose, if you're shedding virus, then you're going to have nucleocapsid, that frame of the house on the nostril swab. And that's what you're testing for when you do the test. Now, it's not as sensitive as that one that you described, Karen, which is the PCR test, which is they were putting it up your nose and they send it in a special machine would amplify the actual genetic code of the virus. That is still a gold standard test. However, that test takes three to four days to get results back. It does usually require you leaving your house, going to a testing site, all that stuff. With the rapid home test, in so much as if somebody is very early in their infection, they may not be making enough of that virus for them to detect it. If you have symptoms and you do a test, and you're positive, it's a real positive. If you have symptoms, you do a test and you're negative, we recommend you stay home, you isolate, and you repeat the test in 24 to 36 hours. And the reason is if you test too early, you might not catch enough of that protein, the nuclear capsid, to turn your home test positive, but it doesn't mean you're not yet infectious, you're infectious, so you should stay home. Now, could you be having a sniffly nose because you have a common cold or some other respiratory virus? Yes, but the truth is right now, Omicron is the most common respiratory virus circulating in the United States. It's highly contagious. Honestly, if you just ride two floors on an elevator with someone, that's enough to expose you if what? you're in there. Yeah, it's very contagious. And so it's really important to get the test. So I applaud this move by President Biden. I would tell you, we have been advocating for home testing for at least two years now and distributing it. The models looking at home testing have been proven at least a year and a half, two years, other countries were already doing this. So countries in Europe were already doing this. Other places were already advocating and encouraging people, home test. There are some places in the world where if you need to get into a restaurant, not only do you have to show that you are vaccinated, you have to show that your rapid antigen test was negative before you can access the the, the mall, the restaurant, et wow. cetera. So it's, I think it's great that he's giving that autonomy to people, but it's important, Karen, like you asked, how do you use it and can you trust it? Yes, you can trust it. You have to swab your nose. 
Why not your throat? Well, the truth is there are different compounds in our saliva or in things that you may have just eaten that would change what we call the pH in the tests and will give you a false positive. So that's why we're encouraging people not to do that. And in fact, when you receive your test, it's going to tell you that not to do the test if you've eaten or drank certain foods within the last 30 minutes because they can give you a false positive. Similarly, if you waste your test and just run it under water, in many places, because water has fluoride and chloride and other compounds that can interact as well with pH, they can give you a false positive. It doesn't mean COVID's in your water. It's not in your water. It's not in your drinking water. It's simply a reaction, a chemistry reaction happening. But you can trust it.